uh, actually, it's a big pleasure presenting again on Hackers to Hackers conference. And uh, actually, I uh, opening after Knot uh, the talks track. And uh, my talk will be about uh, BIOS vulnerabilities. And actually, we will talk about a lot uh, of different things, uh, include uh, Intel Boot Guard and Intel BIOS Guard. And uh, I will introduce myself a bit. So I embedded security researcher, uh, have a lot of experience in reverse engineering, and uh, actually, before of that, I uh, been working for Intel, ESET, and Silence, and also I'm co-authoring the book uh, uh, Rootkits and Bootkits: Reverse Engineering Next Generation Threads. So um, today uh, we will start about the attacks on the BIOS updates, and then continue with uh, some new vectors of uh, bypassing and attacking. Intel boot guard, and also uh, we will talk about architecture of things Intel BIOS guard, which is actually very uh, uh, hidden. It's not actually, uh, don't have any uh, public information about architecture of things of Intel BIOS guard on, from Intel. Um, also, I want to actually promote two talks, which is one of them, it will be 3 p.m. today from Alex Yermolov. He will be talking about uh, BIOS vulnerabilities too, and also he will cover some uh, things about uh, debugging, hardware debugging with DCI interface, which is very interesting and very useful for vulnerability research. And other talk will be happens tomorrow, it's Alex Bajanuk. He will be cover the vulnerabilities from SMI handlers and also Trust Zone. Uh, let's start a bit with introduction. And um, if we uh, uh, look uh, in the history perspective how uh, rootkits been involved, and in the beginning it's been delivered by uh, some dropper from user mode in ring tree and uh, actually dropper loaded the driver and after that when Microsoft introduced uh, starting from Windows 7 uh, uh, Microsoft sign-in policy it's a bit moved to uh, bootkits world when uh, uh, we do have like infections for MBR, VBR and where the loader actually going to modify uh, Microsoft bootloaders and then uh, allowed some malicious component to kernel mod directly. So, and if we focus it in nowadays, after secure boot is coming, so, um, could you open please? So, uh, after secure boot being is appeared on from Windows 8, so uh, it's actually very difficult to uh, find the machine where the secure boot is not active. So actually nowadays, uh, zero kits start moving to uh, closer to hardware and um, actually specifically to ECMM, which is a system management mode. And system management mode, it's very interesting from the attacker perspective because uh, you have a power to uh, to have access all the physical memory space and also you can actually discover all the memory which is responsible for kernel mode, for user mode, even for the virtualization stuff. And um, uh, if we look into the spon state sponsored attacks which has been disclosed with the WikiLeaks and Vault 7 and other things, actually, uh, usually it's like that. We have a trampoline which is in the SMM and then the loader getting into um, operating system level, which is actually load some component inside kernel mode because actually it's much easier to track application from that level if you want to intercept some messages, whatever. Of course, you can parse all the memory from SMM, but it's much complex than just uh, use the rootkit inside the kernel mode. And um, more mitigations, actually more rootkits complexity. And what we can see is now in nowadays, uh, the rootkits uh, moving to closer and closer to the hardware. And uh, actually, we uh, have a lot of information already on the public about the BIOS implants, and it's like not a myth, it's really true, but it's complex and it's actually expensive to develop, why it's using for uh, state-sponsored attacks and complex APTs. I need some water because yesterday been a party. 
and actually, uh, modern rootkits uh, move into hardware closer. And if we actually look at this picture, it's uh, copied from presentation from Rodrigo Branco and Vincent Zimmer from Black Hat this year. And they actually disclosing some vulnerabilities from uh, which is being processed by Intel PCR. And we can see the growth of configuration-based vulnerabilities, which is actually uh, says like we have the platform which is being configured uh, not a proper way and has a vulnerabilities by default on this hardware or uh, BIOS configuration, whatever, which is specifically says it's very useful for attacker. And today we will be actually discuss some of the vendors which is, uh, has a lot of problems with their hardware. Um, from other perspective, uh, we do have uh, a lot of uh, attention from the big companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, because they do have a cloud uh, which is um, actually has a hardware. And as example, if one of these servers have a BIOS implant, this BIOS implant can discover like all the guests on the server, and for the cloud attack, it's like extremely uh, dangerous. And um, recently, Google been introduced the Teton chip, which is protect the root of trust uh, from the hardware. And as example, if you have a, a server with a Teton chip, it will be armored the BIOS updates and also check, make some attestation for. Uh, for uh, the hardware inside the platform, which is very interesting, and it shows like uh, modern way how the big companies moving to uh, develop their own hardware for protect from supply chain attacks. But let's move uh, to the BIOS updates issues, and um, it's very interesting because actually last year. I already discussed the problems with the BIOS updates, but this year I discovered more. So UFI world is huge, right? So we have automotive, we have like a lot of different platforms which is used UFI, even like EOT space sometimes use it. And uh, we have like huge ecosystem with the different vendors, which is like uh, use different uh, SDKs, frameworks. As example, we have Intel EDK2, but also like on top of it, we have American Megatrends, Phoenix, Insight, which has produced some of uh, interesting frameworks for vulnerability research. And uh, now, actually, uh, if we talk about the legacy, legacy bias is gone. Actually, UEFI is everywhere, but now legacy inside the UEFI because it's very complex. We have a lot of different components. It's uh, very difficult to keep all the things up to date. And look inside the BIOS update image how many different firmwares we have for just one UEFI image for the BIOS update. It's more than a 10 uh, different firmwares for different hardware components in, into your motherboard. So, we do have like different sensors, graphics, networks, ME, uh, BMC, AMT, actually microcode, BIOSGuard, and TXT. So uh, today we will focus more like on BIOSGuard, BootGuard, and ACMs. EB touch the management mode. And of course, we will be discuss some vulnerabilities which I found for this talk. And here is four different vendors involved, actually four or five. <laughs> so American Megatrends, but uh, American Megatrends produce some framework which is used by Gigabyte, Asus, Lenovo, and MSI, and I found vulnerabilities specifically on these vendors. So um, let's talk a bit what kind of protections do we have for the bias? And if we uh, look on the left side, we have uh, some simple bit protections, which is actually easy to bypass and easy to forget for enable it, which is actually a lot of vendors does. And here's the issues which I found. Um, other ways we have um, PRX registers, which is kind of policy for access for spy flash regions. And it's actually uh, separated from uh, 
bias protections bit, which is makes sense. And um, both, if we both enable it, it's much harder harder to bypass it. But it's also like we have a vendor which just does, <laughs> don't use it at all. From other thing, we have a like sign in and notification for the updates, and also like not all of vendors use it. And of course, fancy technologies like BootGuard and BiosGuard. And uh, we also today will discuss two issues which I found for my Black Hat talk. And look on this picture, actually the spreadsheet, uh, which is shows how different vendors use the simple protections. And if you look on top, which is actually uh, highlighted by red, you see like uh, ASUS, MSI, and Gigabyte, they just don't care. So it's like, Simple things doesn't used even like BIOS updates. It's not authenticated properly, so they just don't care. <laughs> and for my um, talk in Black Hat Asia this year, I'm already actually uh, demonstrate how it can be dangerous with a simple uh, um, demonstration and proof of concept of UEFI ransomware. You can find by this link this material. So, and um, this actually uh, demo being demonstrated from a office document to ECMM. So, and it can be used for remote attacks and um, it's actually already probably used. And I have a question to audience actually. Uh, do you update your bias? Who never update your bias? <laughs> okay, who update just once? <laughs> yeah, so actually, think is like, uh, usually it's very common, normal users never update the bias, they just bought the hardware and that's it, because they actually didn't know they need to update the, the, the bias, right? It's not delivered with a Microsoft update, how they usually actually Microsoft does uh, patch and use this. And uh, everybody forget about this, and it's extremely uh, vulnerable thing, and keep be vulnerable even with already patched uh, issues, like years, sometimes like uh, the t <laughs> all the life of your laptop, <laughs> it can be vulnerable. So, and um, if we back to uh, proof of concept of UFI ransomware, I used uh, these issues, um, for uh, bypassing uh, 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 the BIOS update authentication, and actually, it's been few stages, and one of them it's been uh, exploiting SMI flash, uh, SMI handler, and uh, make a privilege escalation to uh, to uh, SMM, and also interesting thing actually. Uh, American Megatrends uh, has a driver, kernel mode driver, which is signed, but uh, this driver actually, uh, user mode application, tell to this driver which kind of SMI handler should be called. And uh, this driver can call any arbitrary SMI handler, so, and actually I use it for attack SMI flash for my demo. So, in generic way, uh, if you look to this picture, uh, we do have uh, different stages how the bias update can be delivered. On first stage, of course, it's update uh, application, which is running on user mode. Then it's loaded some driver, which is met bias update image to the memory. And then, like, update um, image being catched by some of the SMI handler which is responsible for the bias update process. And we actually do have like two of them, SMI flash and security SMI flash. And most interesting part, I also found the issue with security SMI flash. And security SMI flash is responsible for validating the signed update. So if you found the issue with security SMI flash, you can just bypass all authentication because uh, you actually already escalate the privileges in this driver, and you can modify flow in runtime, which is funny, right? So, um, SMI flash uh, does have uh, this kind of SMI handler, which is write, uh, read, and erase. Um, 
uh, and uh, highlighted by red, uh, it's been vulnerable for uh, different platforms which I found for this research. The interesting thing, it's very easy actually to fix this kind of issues um, with a security check, but, but I don't know, why is developers too lazy? Uh, same thing about security semi-flash. We do have uh, three semi-handlers and uh, in my uh, case it's been all of them vulnerable. Actually, it's specifically why the BIOS guard and wood guard being created because they want to protect uh, uh, from the SMM issues, the BIOS update and armoring, uh, not only BIOS update, even like secure boot from uh, uh, before the SMM and BIOS will be loaded. So a bit about the responsible disclosure and it's kind of fun, right? So uh, we, I do have communicate with different vendors and uh, actually mm, it's been good response from Lenovo and uh, Gigabyte been a bit uh, slow but they at least patch it. But the ASUS been best, so um, I submit the issues to them, and after a month they say, so it's no issues, no issues. And I actually uh, download the recent update for the same platform where I found the issues, and they actually silently released the patch with my issues. So I make simple bin diff and discover where they patched the issues, it's been my issues, so I make it this tweet, it's been some support from community. And actually, after that, they send me email. Sorry, we actually not mention you, but yes, it's your issues. <laughs> That's kind of cool, right? So, uh, it's ASOS. Um, let's focus more interesting and serious things like Intel Bootguard and um, why actually boot guard being created? So uh, the main thing for boot guard is armoring the secure boot flow. And uh, if we're talking about the secure boot, so it's been there like since 2012, and uh, almost uh, every every time it's been based on root of trust, based on BIOS. So and uh, attack surface, it's all the firmware, right? So. Then uh, in 2013, it's been introduced the boot guard technology, which is armored uh, uh, secure boot flow. And uh, it has two options, like measured boot and verified boot. So measured boot, it's more um, software mode, which is like uh, use the TPM as a root of trust. And here is the same problem. It can be attack surface based on the firmware. And verified boot, it's most strongest mode, where actually root of trust moved from the firmware to the hardware and lock it by uh, one time programming field fuse. Yeah, and uh, actually we will discuss some of bypasses for this technology today, not only mine, and uh, it's very interesting. And so, Actually, why is this technology be, being created by Intel? Because uh, classical secure boot start the flow from the Dixie phase, which is actually a last phase before it's passing, um, passing uh, control to the bootloaders for operating system. And um, here's a lot of issues with implants and boot kits from SMM for that. And actually, classical secure boot being for like a U5, it's been created for validating and authentication uh, bootloaders for operating system. But then it's kind of difficult because all the issues from SMM can uh, bypass it. And uh, it's no verification for most early boot stages like SEC stage, security stage, and platform initialization stage. And on other, actually, side, we do have a measured boot, but same thing, it started earlier than Dixie, but also can be uh, bypassed from the firmware. 
and only actually verified boot uh, can be more interesting mode for protection, which is like moved a root of trust to the hardware. Um, I'm already actually showed it uh, in my previous year presentation, this picture. It's from the Vincent Zimmer's blog, and it describes how Intel boot guard technology works. It's not a lot of details, right? So most interesting thing, it's kind of root of trust going to the hardware. And uh, I, I reconstructed this picture from different sources based on uh, presentations from the researchers and the books which is available on public, but it's not uh, uh, yet Intel released the specification for the technology. And we can see, so uh, actually we do have a microcode and um, which is authenticate ACM for the boot guard and only after that it's passing control after verification to reset vector and a reset vector actually um, loads uh, initial boot uh, block which is IBB for check the second pace stage and passing control to the secure boot on the Dixie phase and then verify the OS boot loaders which is makes sense. And uh, boot guard has a three oper operates, operation modes, uh, which is like not enable it, uh, measure it, uh, verify it boot, and verify it boot plus measure it boot, which is most strongest mode. Um, here is a picture from uh, one of the Intel papers uh, from IDF, uh, I don't remember which year, probably 15, right? So, um, and uh, we can see how the actually um, root of trust and policies going from the Intel boot guard and passing each level uh, to the next one. And the thing is like, it's not really uh, showing anything. You can see like, okay, we do have a policies with a check in some different phases, but what actually the technology does. And um, the root of trust, it's fuse program, uh, one time uh, field programmable fuse and uh, actually start pay block, it's, it is an in initial boot block, IBB, in terms of boot guard technology. And this policy is checked by ACM. And um, let's look uh, on more detailed picture. So um, we do have um, we do have um, uh, part which is based on hardware and uh, we have management engine which is has read write access to field programmable fuse which is actually stores a hash uh, OM public key hash which is actually a root of trust for other firmware image uh, policies so we do have in BIOS update K manifest which is store like a lot of different things and initial boot block manifest the interesting thing like this chain have uh, like chain verification policies which is locked in hardware. Uh, thing is, field programmable fuse, it's very sensitive place, right? If it's not locked, it can be an issue. But it, we will be discussed a bit later about that. And other thing, for uh, any modification of FPF, we need access, read and write from the management engine to these regions. Uh, just before my Black Hat talk, uh, Dell uh, released the paper, here is a link, about how their implementation of Bootguard, Bootguard works. And it's pretty interesting because it has much more details than Intel ones. And uh, here is actually we can see like PCH responsible for the fuses and it's why actually ME is, in, is involved. And uh, inside the BIOS updates we have these structures which is similar stuff but in different uh, visualization which is I just discussed. And if you're interested about the boot guard technology I highly recommend to look this link. But same thing like uh, what is what, right? So. Uh, here is uh, specifically FPF and 
all of this stuff starting by a subdate image. Um, I checked uh, security for different platforms. And uh, if you think actually Apple's the best ones, it is not. Because uh, we have Apple right there, and it doesn't support uh, boot guard, it doesn't support a lot of different things, and actually secure boot is not the securest one uh, for current state uh, at Apple platforms. And, uh, but worst one, it's actually gigabyte bricks, because <laughs> it's too much power and flexibility for the attacker uh, exist here, so we do have like read-write access to the memory regions, we do have uh, read-write access to the embedded controller, we do have DCI CPU debugging enabled. It will be discussed a bit more detailed from Alex Yermolov talk at 3 p.m. today, uh, why it's actually so dangerous. And um, other stuff, we do have like FPF not set, and uh, boot guard, uh, FPF, it's not programmed, so it's kind of interesting, and we will be focused a bit more on it. And bias guard is disabled, so it's perfect target, right? Ah, and also I want to highlight, actually, the Dell and HP did a good job, so they actually most securest one from my research. So, if you think uh, hardware vendors care about security, it is not. Not, not, not all of them really cares. Uh, the first thing, as example, small vendors like Gigabyte, Asus, MSI, they even uh, don't have a security teams, which has been like, uh, will be like uh, uh, checking the security for the hardware which is, will be released on public. No, they don't have even more. If you submit the issues to them, uh, it's very hard to like uh, uh, prove it is an issue because they not understand a lot of things from the security research space. So trust no one. And also I want to make some reference to initial research which has been did from, uh, which has actually been done from Alex Yermolov. And it's, here is a link. Uh, he uh, first uh, who found the issue when Bias boot guard being not enabled and also programmable fuse not being locked. That's mean like a attacker can use boot guard for lock the rootkit inside the platform. Yeah. But attacker actually never attacks specification, right? So it's always focused on implementation stuff. So um and um, the thing is, mm, uh, let's talk about how the boot guard is implemented. And um, if we do have this stuff inside the BIOS update image and the fuse, it's not set, we only rely on the firmware security. And even if you have verified boot active, it doesn't matter. The configuration is doesn't locked. So uh, I recovered the structures for the K-manifest. It's not documented, and uh, it's my templates from uh, zero 01 uh, uh, editor. So we can see what it is. We do have... Uh, IBBM hash, which is a vendor hash, RSA ORM public key, and RSA signature. So, and also uh, the uh, IBBM public key, which is plus uh, K-manifest security version number. On the other side, we do have uh, initial, initial boot block manifest, which is a bit complex. And uh, the main thing, it's actually uh, has the hashes and offsets for initial boot block for protecting most early stages of booting, like pay and sex set stage. And um, actually, if you look into UEFI tool, which is a public tool, uh, and you can download from the GitHub, it already has found 
uh, found the BIOS, AC, uh, BIOS guard ACM uh, and uh, uh, boot guard policy and boot guard K manifest, and you can easily dump from them. It's because like uh, Intel has uh, this kind of fit entry technology, which is offset based, and it's documented on EDK too. And actually, uh, let's look inside the boot block, how it uh, looks like inside uh, uh, the policy. So we do have hashes and offsets, which is actually pointing us inside the BIOS image, what kind of region is protected. We have a beginning and the end. And um, specifically for my uh, attacked uh, platform, we do have uh, the coverage which is started uh, mostly from the beginning of the firmware image and covered all the SEC and pay and Dixie phases. And also very interesting part is uh, ACM, which is authenticated code model, because uh, it's actually not a lot of information on public how uh, this kind of code is executed. And uh, specifically on Intel platforms, uh, and actually I didn't uh, see any ACMs which has been not developed by Intel. And uh, uh, bootguard ACM is verified by microcode. So the microcode checks the digital sign for authenticated model. After that, it's loaded to the cache with non-invicted mode and executed. So we do have entry point ACM header and also uh, RSA public key. Uh, exponent is stored here and also RSA signature. A very interesting part sometimes IBB initial boot block doesn't cover all ACM model and cover only the header. And um, think is like if it's cover the header, it's very like difficult to modify anything, right? So uh, because microcode based on this header information and information which is stored inside, uh, check the uh, signature. And if anything is modified, the ACM code will be not executed. But also think is like we know the entry point, right? So we know how, uh, how the court code and where it starts. A bit information about ACM. So um, ACM for the boot guard, it verifies K-manifest and IBB and also it's executed in ACRM, which is a cache. As RAM. And um, I developed a uh, uh, loader for IDA for loading ACMs and make uh, the research for ACMs more, uh, more handy. So it's a flow from ACM and it's verification flow from the entry point. We can see like it's checking the uh, boot guard policies, and also this graph actually how uh, demonstrate how many basic blocks we do have inside the uh, ACM and how it's complex it is. So it's a bit bigger picture. From the entry point, we have a boot guard validation, platform in it, and actually get, uh, we getting uh, some uh, manifest from the firmware image, which is says clearly we do have parsers inside ACMs. And uh, after I think about parsers, always I think about the bin diffing from the past version of ACMs. And I did actually some bin diffing for different versions of ACMs. As example, I compare Haswell and Skylake. And here is actually not a lot of uh, changes, just one, but when I make it from Broadwell to Skylake, I found a lot. And um, mostly it's been exist inside different parsers, um, routines, and uh, some of them actually parse, oh, uh, patch uh, integers, overflow, and others. And it's kind of interesting because uh, ACM, it's loaded on the beginning, 
but it still keep it in the same offset where it's been loaded on the beginning into the memory and you can find it. And uh, so if you know some issues and you know like BIOS is not updated, you can actually exploit some of the issues inside ACM or probably you can do something with that. So inside the firmware, we do have uh, following components for uh, BootGuard, which is responsible for different things. And uh, most actually interesting things, uh, actually all, all of them, <laughs> because it's uh, different stages of verification. And uh, here is my uh, rec reconstructed flow on uh, pseudo C language. So, and uh, here is actually verification for uh, IBB from BootGuard Pay, platform initialization driver. And what it's actually validates, it validates of course offsets and also platform hash key, which is iron constructed uh, uh, from, uh, from the gigabyte update where we're looking for now. And we already actually seen this coverage for IBB for specific BIOS update. Here is a bit information uh, how, how actually from ECMM we validate uh, the flow and uh, we do have uh, different things. The most interesting things actually uh, ECMM driver communicates with ME management engine over uh, HECI driver which is very interesting because if we do have any issues with ME, that means we can actually operating in the same way, but from the operating system level, like from the kernel mode. So, and what actually uh, Verify boot firmware boot guard driver does? It does actually a few interesting things. It's find and verify ACM, uh, verify it K-manifest, and verify uh, boot policies, but it's do it from the ECMM, that means like we do have the state when not all of the boot flow for verification is involved, right? And um, I start thinking uh, about how actually different, f different flows for the boot and uh, reboot the platform is worked, and then I'm figuring out, so for the sleep mode, it's not verified all the flow, and actually it's just verified some part of it. And uh, specifically uh, for the Black Hat, I dropped this uh, null day, uh, zero day bug. And I uh, think it's like already patched for a lot of platforms. But it was funny. After my talk, some of the vendors comes and says like, wow, we just actually last week patched this issue. And uh, it's been cool because it's been best confirmation the bug is existing in real platforms and hardware, not only the shit gigabyte. And uh, after a while, after two months, actually Intel uh, patched it uh, for Intel NUX and uh, kudos to Alex, uh, he is found for Intel NUX uh, boot guard bypass based uh, on my discoveries before and uh, he published very detailed blog post about it. So uh, in my case, in being target platform uh, based on Gigabyte, uh, it's sixth generation Skylake with uh, enabled, fully enabled Intel boot guard, but not locked by hardware. And um, BIOS guard, it's not enabled, which is make it much more easier to bypass. And I found uh, two vulnerabilities which is used for this boot guard bypass. First of one, it's a read and write access to EME regions other one, uh, the fuse is not locked. So uh, we just uh, showing it is true from uh, ME info tool. So you can see like ME access for read and write is enabled and boot guard is enabled. And actually boot guard uh, is enabled with most strongest mode like uh, verify it and measure it boot together but uh, it's not locked for the vendor hash key. So, 
And also funny part, uh, Gigabyte specifically for, the, for this platform says like, it's very secure. It can be used in ATMs, in like critical infrastructure, uh, vending machines, security system, governmental hospitals, whatever. And the same platform I actually used for, for uh, POC of ransomware. <laughs> Uh, how we can uh, bypass uh, this platform um, with a boot guard? So, we do have a firmware update image which is not properly authenticated. Uh, and we do have uh, like initial boot block which is we can modify because like the configuration is doesn't work. So, we can modify uh, 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 K-manifest, we can modify uh, uh, vendor hash key OM hash key inside the uh, firmware uh, programming views, and then we can log with a uh, uh, rootkit or just disable it, whatever. It will be not enabled and will be allow us to uh, uh, bypass the secure boot from SMM and don't care about the boot guard. So, if we don't have the root of trust into the hardware, that actually means it's very, not very easy, but it's possible to bypass from the firmware. Doesn't matter. It's like you use verified boot plus measured boot. Doesn't matter. It can be bypassed. So here is the Intel statement, uh, which is actually uh, Intel p uh sent to me before my presentations. And um, they provide uh, uh, they provide some requirements to the hardware vendors and they clearly say to them like the root of trust should be locked inside the hardware but not a lot of hardware vendors really cares, right? And here is actually a gigabyte statement about the issue. So they release a tool which is can be lock the fuse but how many users we really don't want this tool and use it for lock the fuse, right? I think it's like really small numbers. And it's small update uh, for this presentation. Just a few days ago, I released an update for UEFI tool, which has made a verification for boot guard and showing the problems if IBB doesn't cover some of the models, which is can be used for attack. Here is actually a GitHub link to specific release, uh, and here is compiled binary. Uh, if you don't trust this compiled compiled binary, just compile yourself from the GitHub from the source code. And here is a blog post which has discussed all the things and how this tool can be used. And let's talk a bit about the BIOS guard. So, BIOS guard. And why it's important actually to have the BIOS guard and boot guard together enable it on the same hardware. So actually BIOS guard, it's armoring uh, the BIOS update routine. So, and if the BIOS guard is enabled, access controlled by ECMs, BIOS guard ACM, and uh, actually uh, BIOS update authenticated from, from uh, uh, microcode. So, uh, it's a picture from Intel documentation, which is also doesn't say a lot. And I looked in specific implementation from American Megatrends, where I discovered how many things responsible for the BIOS guard we do have into the firmware. And uh, here is like seven different uh, drivers, UEFI drivers exist on different uh, 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 stages, phases of booting, and uh, it's actually a huge attack surface, uh, which is uh, will be a bit more detailed dis discussed in the zero night talk in the next uh, three weeks. <laughs> so, and um, here is some details what this kind of modules does, and we also see like things like parse update image parser for, for recovery process. We do have like a bias guard policy override module. We do have capsule update verification, which is also pretty like complex uh, parser inside. And uh, 
We do have SMI handlers here, right? So, um, BiosGuard has like uh, command for commands uh, for like uh, different stages, like platform initialization, and for SMM for delivering the updates. And uh, more details I will talk about on zero nights. And I want to actually promote uh, the HackQuest, which is a kind of CTF uh, for uh, for individuals, which will be, will be started uh, next Monday. This, here is the links, and if you want to compete with the Russian hackers, go here and try to get some prizes. So, come to Zero Nights to hear more details about the BIOS Guard, and uh, here is the link uh, with the presentation and all the stuff about this research. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, do you have any questions? Anyway, if you not have it now, I will be around uh, during the conference and come to me to discuss more issues about the firmware or whatever. So here is my Twitter. And uh, thank you very much again. <laughs>